Hi guys, my name is Alex Tilford and welcome to unitycookie.com. In this tutorial we're going to be taking a good introductory look to writing surface shaders in Unity. Now please note that this tutorial requires a very basic knowledge of scripting such as variables and functions. If you have never looked at code before, I definitely recommend that you see our introduction to scripting tutorial first in the getting started section. Now when creating your materials for games, there is no such thing as a single shader that will work in every situation. So there is a lot of different surface types and often you just can't get that from an existing shader. And this is where shader writing comes in. So in this tutorial we are going to be looking at what a shader is, how to read the language, and how to write any shader that we require. Now be sure to pay close attention and we do have a text version over on unitycookie.com and post any questions you have if you get stuck. There is a lot to cover and being an entirely new language, it, chances are you're going to have a few questions. So my goal is to help you guys understand how these shaders work and how you can write your own shaders from scratch. So let's get started. So what is a shader? So behind every material in Unity, there is a small block of text called a shader. Now a shader contains a series of commands for everything that is needed to create the surface properties of the material, such as albedo. Now albedo is also known as the color output. Alpha, which you might also refer to as transparency. There is normals. There is specularity and gloss, which is how shiny the surface is. And there's also emission. Now emission, don't confuse that with actually emitting light. Emission is effectively, it fakes the effect. So we, we use that for when the light affects the mesh. So such as room lighting is will affect the emission. And yeah, so it's not always the mesh itself emitting light. So let's take a look at an example that we have here. So these two robots look basically the same. There's a couple of slight variations, of course, but in effect, they are the same robot with the same shader. So let's take a look at the robot on the left. Now, this robot has a self-illuminated bumped specular shader. And this is just a default shader that comes with Unity. You guys should have all of these. And yeah, it's it does the job. It looks nice. And it's what we want. However, what if it's not what we want? What if we want it to do something else? Let's take a look at what the shader can actually do. First off, you'll see that we have our images. So we have our diffuse image, which also has the gloss channel in the alpha channel. You'll find that a lot in shaders, is they will put the gloss in the alpha channel of their image, simply to save space. We have an illumination, which is all of these dots and such everywhere. And we have a normal map, which creates all of our little bumps. So what happens when I want to, let's say, adjust how shiny this is? Well, I can come over to the shiny slider and I can adjust that quite nicely. And yep, that works. I'm happy with how that works. I can adjust that specular color if I want. Let's say he's under a purpley blue light. I can even tint the entire robot. So I can make him a green robot if I want. However, what if we want to adjust how strong the illumination is? What if we want to have a bit of room lighting on this? That's where a custom shader comes in. So if we jump over to the second model, you can see we have a lot of the same settings. We have our diffuse with the gloss in the alpha channel. We have our normal map. We have the illumination. And then we have a whole bunch of other settings. So you'll recognize the specular color, which we can 
set the same as the other one. We have specular power, which is effectively the same as shininess, except it's a bit reversed. So that's just one that I've set up as a custom one for my preference. Let's set that back to white so we can see that a little better. So I can sort of crunch that down beyond what we normally would be able to. And then we also have a few options like illumination intensity, which as you can see, makes those bits glow. And you can imagine already having this, you know, throbbing in and out. We have the rim color. So we can add in a rim color of anything we want. And you'll see this effect a lot on games. We have, of course, the rim power, so how intense that is. Rim contrast level. So you can see we get some interesting looking effects here. So I should probably fix this up a little and make it uh, stick to the outsides, but you get the idea. It's just a quick shader that I wrote up. And in all, it just looks quite nice. It, it definitely gives us the effect that we, that we want. It gives us a lot more control over our shader. So what does the shader look like? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over to Mono Develop and I'm going to give you a quick look at the shader for this robot. Alright, so this is the shader for the robot. Now this is a little complex. We're not going to start out with, you know, all of this stuff and throw that at you. We're actually going to start off simple and we're going to work our way up and write all our shaders from scratch, explaining everything as we go. I just wanted to give you a quick look at some of the, at some of the stuff that we will be creating. Okay, so let's take a look at a simpler shader than this. Okay, so this is lesson one. Uh, lesson one dot shader is where you'll find it. And this is a simple diffuse shader. So what we have is we have an image. So you can see, and we have an outcolor, and there is the only two things that really matter here. So what makes up the shader is what's called Shader Lab and CG Program. Uh, CG Program it's also referred to sometimes as CG or HLSL, and it is the meat of our sandwich effectively. So let's break this down right into the core elements. So if I remove our actual shader code from there and our properties, this is all that we're left with. Now this here is our base shader. So this is our bread of our sandwich. Imagine that we're, we're making a sandwich and this is our bread and we're gonna put some stuff into it. So we've got, of course, at the top, you can see we have the category and the name. So I've chosen to put this in a Unity Cookie category and I've called it Diffuse Texture. We have our Properties block as it is quite easily named. So all of our properties go in here. This is things like sliders, images, normal maps, bump maps, cube maps, um, float values, if you want to type in a number. Uh, there is your yeah, color pickers. Anything you want as an input goes into the little properties box, which we'll be looking at a little bit in detail later as well. Okay, and now we have what's called a sub shader. Now, a sub shader is the actual shader that is being rendered. So, a sub shader, you'll often see multiple sub shaders. You might see Four sub shaders like that, and it would be, you know, PC, Xbox, PS3, 
and maybe iOS. And you can get another one for Android if you like as well. And it will progressively go through these and try and re and try and use them. If it gets to this one and oh what do you know it can't it can't use it. It's um it's not updated enough to use the shader, it will go down to the next one and the next one and the next one until it co comes all the way back down to this diffuse. So this this fallback is a fallback shader of what will happen if this shader can't run any other shader. So it'll just render a basic diffuse. So it doesn't vanish from the view, it just comes out all diffuse looking. So effectively that's just like oh, we've got the bottom we've got the bottom uh, piece of bread in our sandwich and the rest of it fell on the floor. So you can still see there was a sandwich there. It's just missing the other bits. If that makes sense. Okay, so what are some of the other things in here? Uh, some of these are, don't make a lot of sense. We're going to ignore properties for now. So we'll come to this later. But we have this, a, a few other things in here, such as render type equals opaque. Now these tags are just some tags that are assigned to your subshader to tell it what it's about to do. So in this case, we're about to render out an opaque texture or an opaque material. Uh, other ones that you might come across is transparent and there, there is a few tags that you can put into your shaders but in general the tag render type equals opaque in these little quotation marks is going to be the most common one you'll use except in the case where you are using a transparent shader. Okay so we will look into these more in depth in the next lesson, but for now we're just giving a nice brief overview of what they are. So the next one is CG program. So if we remove this uh, inner CG, we have this CG program and NCG. Now what this does is it tells Unity, so it tells our shader that we're about to start programming using the CG program language. So if you don't do this, it's going to think it's still in shader lab. So coming down the sandwich, it's gone through the bread and it's come to this and it, we've got our CG program and, you know, that's telling it, all right, we're about to actually have some, you know, we're going to have some meat in the sandwich. So you can kind of think of it as like your mayo. You put your mayo on the top and the bottom and all your meat goes in the middle and that sort of tells Unity, you know, we're about to start processing some shader here. And inside here goes our CG program language. So outside of here, this is our bread. This is our shader lab. Inside of here, we've got our meat, which is our CG program. So first line we've got here, is we have this Pragma Surface Surf Lambert. Now this one here actually confused me for a long time until I actually looked up and found out what it meant. Effectively a Pragma is just some little properties for your for your shadow. So just some core parameters. Uh, just to you know make sure that things are going to work the way they should. So it starts off by having Pragma and then the surface type is a surface. So it doesn't make much sense at the moment having, you know, surface surf. Why would we say that the surface is a surface? Of course it's a surface. But when we start working with vertex programs and, uh, you know, vertex fragment operators and core shader lab shaders, so that's sh shader lab shaders without any CG program. Effectively, it's just, you know, it's two pieces of bread together for a sandwich. Um, and they, those shaders are used on, you know, old devices. So think of it, think of it like a old man that can't eat anything in the sandwich anymore. He's only allowed to have the bread. And that is where the pure shader lab shaders are from. Uh, well, not from, but you know, that's, it's, yeah, I'm speaking in, uh, in terms here. So, yeah, back to this. We have the, Pragma, you know, defines some core parameters. The surface type is surf. 
Lambert is our lighting model. Now, there's a few different lighting models that we can use. There is Lambert, and there's another one called Blin Fong. Now, Blin Fong is effectively a shiny shader. So, as you can see over here, I used a Blin Fong for that one. So, I get some, reflex, you know, some specularity on it. But later on, we're actually going to start writing our custom lighting model. So, we could start writing things like custom lighting, or we could write uh, custom BRDF or match cap. It's up to you, but for now let's stick to Lambert. So that this is where we write our custom lighting model. So Lambert is our lighting model. Okay, moving down, we have a struct. Now if you're familiar with programming, you'll know what a struct is, but for now let's just say that this is our input. So our, we're using a struct input. And this one here, as you can see, struct input and close off that tag. And we put all of our core inputs in here. So this is where we define inputs to our shader, such as UV coordinates or vertex colors, uh, same as view direction or world reflections, sort of the extra things. So we've got our parameters elsewhere, but any inputs that need defining that we that we need to take from the core of unity come into here okay moving down we have this sample 2d main text now we're going to have a look at what this actually means a little bit later but this is where we define all of our properties so we write them up here and then we have to define them down within our sub shader And finally, we come to this void surf. So there's a couple of lines you'll see. You'll see void surf, and you'll see void vert. Vert for vertex colors, of course. Surf for surface. And effectively, what this is, is we want to output our shader. So you can see, we're taking input over here into our in value. So we want the input to be in, and then our in out surface output is O. So the the variable that we want to use for our surface output is O, as you can see down here. If I change that to A, we could use A, but in general, O is the most common variable you'll see for our output. And down here we also have O dot albedo, as we mentioned before, albedo is the color. And we're going to get a lot more in depth into what all of these things mean. But for now, this is a quick breakdown of the basic shader. And what we want to do is we want to start looking at how to actually write our shaders.